Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. And in this specific video, I wanted to talk about the bigger truths behind the verbal war that's happening right now between U.S. President Donald Trump and the U.S. intelligence agencies. Now, as we know, Trump's relationship with the intel community hasn't been the best one with him previously comparing the leaks that were coming out about him from the intelligence community akin to Nazi Germany. Now, this, of course, makes many people speculate about a deep state, but surely the situation is a lot more complicated. And as we're going to document in this video, not as clear cut as you think. By the way, a <coughs> video that's sponsored by you. Uh, will you check out our t-shirts, you could, which you could probably just click in the description or there's probably images below this video where you could click purchase some new merchandise, especially the new t-shirts that we have right now, and be a part of the direct user support for this independent media channel. Now, a lot of the information that we're going to be talking about today actually relates to a video that we just made a couple days ago criticizing a mainstream media news article that said that U.S. intelligence agencies quote, are saying that Russia and China are plotting to interfere in the 2020 elections. This video will be available in the description so you could get a better context and understanding of what's happening here. Now, I was actually going to grab a news article surrounding this specific case and critique it, but honestly, there's so much disinformation and propaganda around this issue that it's going to be important for me to actually do a deep dive into this and show you a series of articles and evidence so you understand this very confusing situation unfolding now. And of course, it all starts with the DNI chief coming out and hearings that are happening right now in the Senate Intelligence Committee, where the heads of key intelligence agencies are coming out and publicly rebuking U.S. President Donald Trump on his assertions about ISIS, Iran, North Korea, and climate change while of course also warning that china and russia will interfere in the 2020 election these of course are allegations coming out in these hearings from the u.s intelligence community which of course is something that the mainstream media is eating up and loving because it is donald trump's policies that are being criticized where he is actually in my opinion doing the right thing with specifically withdrawing troops from syria trying to withdraw troops from Afghanistan and starting that dialogue and also reaching out to a bigger peace deal and denuclearization with North Korea. Now, of course, Donald Trump is being attacked because of this by the very predominantly war happy mainstream media. And it is important to note here that this information is coming from the same intelligence community that has oftentimes been caught red handed lying to the American people specifically when it comes to the bigger context of war and conflict, usually lying to get us into these problems while of course at the same time faking intelligence to keep us in there and prolong these conflicts, conflicts which of course are big profit motives for big industries, especially the military industrial complex. And this is why a lot of people are characterizing what's happening now as a war and an attack by Donald Trump supposedly against these intelligence communities, which clearly disagree with each other on key American policy. Now, the very interesting part here and the bigger contradiction here that's important for you to understand is the very fact that Donald Trump isn't that big of a peace neck as you think he is. And verbally, with this entire situation unfolding, verbally he has come out and said that the intelligence community hasn't been tough enough on Iran, chastising that intelligence community for not being as hawkish as he wants them to be, characterizing them as being soft on Iran, which, as we know, has been an Israeli, Saudi Arabian, and neocon dream to invade for a very long time, engaging in, in a conflict with that country. So I think it's fair to conclude here what a lot of people are coming to the conclusion of is that this is not a pro-war versus anti-war argument or bigger conflict and fight that's happening here, but this is a more confusing one about which wars should and shouldn't be fought. And it's fascinating to see the U.S. intelligence community come out verbally and say that they do not believe that Iran is currently undertaking, quote, key activities 
needed to produce a nuclear bomb, an assessment which of course is totally contradicting Trump's administration and of course the bloodthirsty demon-like creature John Bolton, Trump's advisor, handpicked. Trump advisor. Donald Trump even said the intelligence people seem to be extremely passive and naive when it comes to the dangers of Iran, saying they are wrong and that they are making trouble all over the Middle East and beyond, which is quote a potential danger and conflict. And if you've been watching our previous geopolitical breakdowns on this channel, you know that there's a lot more to this bigger call for conflict with Iran and that these comments are not only not genuine, but also not in the best interest of the United States, but of course for some of our key allies. But regardless of those facts, I think the one constant that we do have here is the fact that the mainstream media, no matter what, just wants war, just ultimately wants blood, wants boots on the ground, wants US intervention, with even some mainstream media journalists like Max Booth insinuating that the United States needs to be in Syria and Afghanistan for as long as 300 years. The mainstream media at the same time is urging Democrats to get past their hatred of Donald Trump to back Donald Trump's administration's effort at quote, democracy promotion in Venezuela. Yes, because the same people who are literally characterizing Donald Trump as the next Hitler Yes, you should definitely trust this man with, quote, <laughs> pushing the goals of democracy with a coup d'etat in a foreign country. Oh, yeah, and then also having the power to take away your Second Amendment at the same time as well. The cognitive dissonance on a lot of these never Trumpers is absolutely insane and their virtues and goals are becoming more apparent and that of course is just the promotion of a conflict that does not need to happen. Now out of the ridiculous amount of candidates running on the Democratic Party against Donald Trump in 2020, the only Democrats that oppose regime change efforts in Venezuela are of course Bernie Sanders and of course Tulsi Gabbard that says that the United States should stay out of Venezuela. Now, personally seeing a lot of the atrocities on the ground in Caracas, Venezuela, I could say for sure I am not a fan of Nicolas Maduro nor his regime and I do hope that the people of that country rise up against their government. But in my opinion, it needs to be done independently of foreign interference for a very specific reason, which I will mention at the end of this video, because again, I believe it's the logical, safe, smartest thing to do in this particular situation. And unlike the mainstream media, like the New York Times, which literally, there's even an opinion piece right now talking about how the US government should bribe the Venezuelan military while at the same time also praising the government of Pinochet of Chile, a ridiculous article that is just laughable. Now, of course, Donald Trump's actions when it comes to this very specific issue in Venezuela has actually garnered him praise, not only amongst Democrats, but also, of course, the mainstream media. Would actions like this and specifically Donald Trump selecting Alien Abrams, who literally as Assistant Secretary of State covered up massacres and other human rights violations that the Reagan administration engineered in Latin America before, as literally the man to quote, bring back democracy to Venezuela. And he of course would be characterized as a deep state asset, which I think is fair to call him that, since he played a major role in most of the ghastly acts committed by US foreign policy within the past 40 years. And I think it's pretty clear here that, you know, people who actually care about supposed democracy uh, don't plot coup d'etats abroad. And I think that's a very fair statement to make here. And of course, while the media and some government officials are throwing the word around democracy, like they actually care about the will of the people or what the people think, which is just laughable. We of course also have John Bolton that's kind of more direct here. Who's just even admitting, yeah, there's actually great US interest in Venezuela's oil capabilities. And as we know, Venezuela has the world's largest oil reserves, totaling 
297 billion barrels to the point where even China significantly invested in that country an estimated 70 billion dollars that China handed over to Venezuela that of course demanded to be repaid back in oil and uh, of course with just absolute mismanagement and horrible government policies by Maduro the country still is is starving just ultimately starving while of course he, e he eats empanadas during national addresses has actually gained weight and released instagrams with salt bay now of course uh, this larger issue with venezuela is not just about democracy and oil it's also with other key geopolitical issues and larger attainments and financial institutions like the u.s petrodollar but regardless of this kind of bigger dispute he's having with the intelligence communities the united states and its allies is still sending its troops to neighboring countries and of course potential plans with specifically israeli soldiers coming to brazil and u.s soldiers according to a notepad that john bolton portrayed obviously very openly to the media allegedly u.s troops going to colombia both of countries that i was documenting weeks ago were even openly talking about invading venezuela a video that you could see on our channel but for me this is not the right move and i agree with other statesmen like ron paul who says we must leave venezuela alone and to me the worst option of course here is war and direct u.s intervention because even the threat of that has been galvanizing a lot of support for Maduro, and a lot of the sanctions and a lot of this bigger economic war and also unfair play with a history of u.s intervention in latin america that has been atrocious by the historical record all of those combinations combined are still leaving support for Nicolas Maduro in that country and are one of the fundamental reasons why he is still in power and still has some support as seen by this video with a large demonstration all wearing red supporting him. And in my own personal belief and analysis from studying this and looking at this and also being on the ground in Venezuela, the geopolitical situation would look completely different if it wasn't for the U.S. putting its nose in there and the current situation that is unfolding wouldn't be there because there wouldn't be an excuse to prop up Maduro. So again, that's just my analysis. I could be completely wrong. And if you think I'm wrong, let me know why in the comment section. I always look forward to learning from you, engaging in a bigger dialogue, because that's what journalists are supposed to do. I have my own thesis. You might have your own. Prove me wrong. I look forward to actually doing what a lot of these mainstream media companies don't do. And that's not only just not being a shill, but also having the comment section open, which conveniently a lot of big organizations don't anymore as it's becoming more obvious about the direct interest that they serve. So yeah, thanks for supporting me, especially through our t-shirt store, allowing us to be truly independent, working for you, the American people, and of course, people of the world, because if it wasn't, I wouldn't be here. And that's why I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more here on youtube.com forward slash we are change.